Hey guys, just a quick video today. Here's a trick on how you can use the headphone out of the Behringer X Air Series, the 12, 16, or 18, to be your own bus so you can use it as another in-ear monitor channel. So I'm gonna be demoing this on the 12 specifically because that's the one that I use and this is definitely the most beneficial because you only get two aux outs. So you only get two in-ear monitor mixes with this setup. This is a way to get a third and possibly even a fourth. You can actually get two extra in-ear monitor sends out of this headphone out. I couldn't find any other videos on how to do this on YouTube. I was surprised uh, and it seemed pretty simple. So, so I figured I'd make one. It is fairly simple, but there are a few extra steps that you need to do. So I'm going to be doing this on the X Air app on the iPad, but you can do this on the desktop X Air edit app as well. Okay, so here's just a really quick setup that I made for the sake of this video. So we have, you know, just five inputs, vocals, guitar, bass, drums, and click. You have your main. Here's the singer's in-ear mix. And then bus two is the guitar player's mix. And what we're trying to do is trying to give bus three the bass in-ear mix and bus four the drum in-ear mix. If you don't know how to do this and how to set this up for an in-ear monitor system, I did a video on it explaining step-by-step -step on how to create your own in-ear monitor rack and control your mix with a tablet or an iPhone. Check out that video if you're interested in how to do that. That's not what this video is about. So you can already see, so when I click on bus one, you know, this is the singer's in-ear mix, I can change what the singer's hearing, more vocals, more guitar, less guitar, more bass, less bass, so on and so forth. I can do the same thing on bus two, guitar ears, turn up the bass, turn down the drums, turn up the click. But when you go to bus three and bus four, you just have these on and off things. So there's two things you have to do. First of all, you need to go back and then you need to go hit setup and then audio slash MIDI. In here, under the monitor settings, you need to set the monitor source. You need to set that to bus three. So now the headphone out is gonna be controlled by bus three right here. So now you got that routed properly. So bus three is going to go out of the headphone out, but you still have just these buttons right here. They're not doing what you need them to do. Hit back. And then what you're going to do is while you're on bus three, go ahead and click vocal and go over to sends. So see sends right here. Go ahead and click the bus sends right here. This is the send one. So this is what's going to bus send one. This is what's going on bus send two. This is what's going on bus send three. Right now it's set to subgroup. You need to set that to pre-fader. Or you can set it to pre-EQ, post-EQ, pre-fader, or post-fader if you want. But most of the time, most in your monitors want to be on pre-fader. And then what you need to do is you need to go through all of them. So on vocals, I set it to pre-fader. I don't know why there's a weird glitch where on the bass, it turned it into the fader. You'll see the solution here in a minute. So now I'm going to go to guitar. Same thing on bus three. I'm going to change that to pre-fader. On the bass, number three. Set to pre-fader, drums, pre-fader, click, pre-fader. So again, there's this weird glitch. So if I go to bus two and then bus three, it fixes the glitch. I don't, I don't know why I did that. But now, so on bus three, I have control over turning up and down the click, up and down the bass. So here's my bass player mix. I can turn the bass up, click, some drums, little guitar, little vocals. Now that's set up. Okay, now here's the most important part. I hope you didn't just tune out because I had this problem. So this was my travel mixer that I brought to Mexico. This is when I first got this. We did a show in Cancun and I tried doing it this way. But so when the bass player turned up the click in his ears, the click went to front of house. It was not routed properly. It was going to front of house. When I turned up the click in the ears, there'd be a click track going to front of house. So what you need to do now is you need to click on right here. So this is bass ears. You have all your input, dynamics, output, preset, output, and stuff like that. You need to make sure that left, right, right here for output is not enabled. It starts off being enabled by default, but you need to set it to off. Otherwise, whatever signal you're getting to bus three is going to go to front of house. So in my situation, the click was going to front of house and you don't want that to happen. That's the way to fix that. So make sure you don't forget that. And then finally, just one more thing. So for bus four, I'm trying to get drum ears. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set these to where I need to. So again, I'm on drum ears, bus four. I'm going to click on vocals, sends. I'm going to go to bus four, bus four send. I'm going to set that as a pre-fader. I'm going to do that for all of them. So now I have a bus four with controlling like this right? But the other step that you have to do is you need to go back, you need to go to your setup. Remember here in the monitor settings. So you need to actually set this to bus three slash four. So now bus three is on the left. 
and bus four is on the right. So again, out here, so then here's the here's the drum mix. This is what they want to hear. And again, don't forget when you're on, you have to go to the select drum ears up here at the top, click output and turn main the output, disable left and right sending. Otherwise, you're going to get that audio going to front of house, which you don't want. So now what you need is you need a splitter cable like this. So what this does, it takes a stereo signal TRS cable and it splits it to the left and to the right. So now you can plug the left side into your in-ear monitor system or headphone amplifier or whatever you're trying to do. And that is now going to get bus three, which encases the bassist ears. So the left side needs of this splitter needs to plug in to the bass ears, whatever that is in your monitors or headphone mix. Bus four needs to plug in for the drums. So again, in your monitor, headphone amplifier, whatever it is. The thing you got to keep in mind is this has to go into a mono signal. It has to go into a mono headphone amplifier. So the Behringer P2, for example, is just a personal headphone monitor that I use all the time. I give these to anytime I have to give in-ear monitors to a drummer. They have a switch in there that you have to switch to mono. If you don't do that, you're only going to get audio in the left side of your ear or the right side of your ear. I did a whole video explaining why am I only hearing click in one side of my earbuds if you do need to fix this problem. So that's it. Just do me a favor. If you made it to the end of this video, this did exactly what you needed. Do me a favor. Just hit the like button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm. Recommend this video to more people and help out my channel. And then you can also subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I do a lot of music tech tips, wireless in-ear monitors, programming, backing tracks, MIDI programming, stuff like that. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Check out those videos by clicking the link on the screen. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Scott Ewell Music. And I also did review that Behringer P2 if you are looking for a cheap wired option for in-ear monitors as well as a $100 in-ear monitor hack to get wireless in-ear monitors. So be sure to check those out. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.